There is news to tell you about in the Rudy Giuliani defamation trial. Let's bring in NBC News justice correspondent Ryan Riley. Ryan, I am told we have a verdict. That's true. The verdict just came in. The jury is coming in uh, to the courtroom now. Uh, Judge Howell took the bench and told the parties that the jury has reached a unanimous verdict here. So in just a few moments, we should be finding out uh, if uh, this jury has imposed what Rudy Giuliani's lawyers have described as the civil equivalent of the death penalty here uh, in this case, given the impact that that could have um, on his life. Uh, Rudy Giuliani uh, is, is not a rich man at, these, uh, at, this, uh, at this point in stage in his life. Um, so it's a question of whether or not they'll be able to collect on those financial uh, penalties that the uh, the jury will be imposing here shortly and what the extent of those financial penalties uh, are going to be. But, you know, if this is the civil death penalty, what I can tell you is based on uh, some of our other uh, reporting that was that Rudy Giuliani's last meal was a cheeseburger. Indeed. Remind us, we've been talking multi-million dollars. What is it that they are asking for here? So they're asking for $24 million for each of these plaintiffs, saying that's how much it would require uh, to repair the reputational damage that was done to them as a result of these lies that were being spread. On top of that, uh, the jury could uh, impose an additional penalty uh, to sort of discourage other people from committing this sort of conduct in the future, sort of to send a message, as the plaintiff's lawyer described here, that other people can't be spreading these baseless lies uh, about innocent election workers who did nothing wrong and saying and making these bizarre claims when... You know, reality, the video shows them handing over a ginger mint, for example. One of the claims that Giuliani made was that they were exchanging a USB drive, and he compared them to drug dealers. And, you know, he also compared them to bank robbers at one point. Um, and, you know, um, that one of the uh, plaintiffs in this case, Shay Moss, argued that that's what Rudy Giuliani thinks of when he sees black people, when he sees black voters. His mind goes there immediately. I want to bring into our conversation MSNBC's Lisa Rubin, who has snuck on set as we received this breaking news. Lisa, you and I have talked about this before, but I think it is worth revisiting how these numbers are set, how you assess reputational damage. Sure. So Ashley Humphreys, who's the expert in this case, essentially tries to reverse engineer it, Alicia, tries to figure out how much would it cost if you were to mount a marketing campaign, so to speak, on behalf of Shea Moss and Ruby Freeman to restore them to where their reputations were before this all took place. And the damage here is really widespread. I've been reading Shea Moss's testimony. There is no question that the damage here was extensive, so extensive that when she went to a Chick-fil-A to try and apply for a job there rather than continuing in her job at the elections department, the person who interviewed her there took his his laptop, turned it around, and faced it toward her with a picture of her and the word fraud stamped right across it and said, what's going on here? Can you explain this to me? Her life was destroyed by this and the reputational campaign that would have to be mounted to put her back to where she was before December 4th, 2020, when the allegations first surfaced, would be considerable. And that's what Professor Humphreys tried to do here. Rev, there's the damage that has been done to American democracy. There is the damage that has been done to our institutions. Those are themes that we come back to over and over again. This case is so important because it is a reminder that there were individuals whose lives were forever changed. And I think that we have to keep in mind, Rudy Giuliani was not just some advocate that believed Donald Trump. He was a celebrated former U.S. attorney. He had been the America's mayor. So when he said that he looked into these things, he had a background that would give credibility to his claims. It's one thing somebody comes in the studio and convinces you or I on something. It's another if we say we investigated it and we were the top federal investigators that broke up the mob and all. So he brought all of that to bear against these women. And I think that you've got to consider that in whatever the jury comes with tonight. This is no ordinary guy that made uh, just reckless statements. This is a guy that should have known how to investigate something. Ryan, I'm told we have a verdict. We do. I'm not going to try to do math live on the air, but it's a significant penalty over uh, $100 million altogether, uh, $75 million in punitary damage, uh, $20 million towards each of them, and then more than $16 million uh, for the first question in compensatory damages. So a significant, significant finding uh, against Rudy Giuliani um, and is really the what the, his loan lawyer would describe as the civil equivalent uh, of the death penalty for, uh, for Rudy Giuliani here. Give me a little context on those numbers, Lisa Rubin. Did any of this surprise you? 
No, it doesn't surprise me. I had actually expected that punitive damages award, Alicia, to be huge. And the reason is, separate from compensatory damages, which are meant to compensate the person for their injuries, including emotional distress, punitive damages are meant to send a message, as Mike Gottlieb, who is one of Ruby and Shay's lawyers, said in his closing statement. They are meant to deter future behavior like that, but also to send a message to the wrongdoer that what you did here was so egregious and so wrong that it's meant to punish him, not to reward them. And so to the extent that the numbers that Ryan has just reported to us are accurate and that there are punitive damages here in excess of $70 million, that is a unanimous jury, Alicia, and I should underscore that. The jury verdict here had to be unanimous, down to the dollar and cent, telling the world what Rudy Giuliani did to these women, particularly abusing that position of trust that he had, as Rev was just discussing, was so heinous that he should be punished more than they should be compensated for their injuries. Ryan, my friend, you said you did not want to do math on the air, but I'm going to ask you to run us through those numbers one more time. Sure, over 150 is what we can uh, we can go with now. So it's 75 in those punitive damages. The compensatory uh, damages uh, is 16 each, and then an additional 20 each for both of them. Um, so you know, very significant uh, finding here. Um, ultimately, landing on slightly different numbers uh, for the compensatory damages. Uh, it, both of them are in the 16 uh, 16 million dollar range, but uh, they're a little bit different for each of them. And then it's matching 20, and then 75 overall punitive. Lisa, you can explain why. Yeah, so there are two categories of compensatory damages here. We've been talking about this case in shorthand, Alicia, as a defamation case, but there were actually two different claims. One was defamation, and one was intentional infliction of emotional distress. And that's where these two numbers divide. Each of these women being awarded more than $16 million on the defamation, but on emotional distress, each of them also being awarded $20 million each for the emotional distress that Rudy Giuliani intentionally inflicted upon them by his statement and then restatement and restatement of the lies about what Ruby Freeman and her daughter Shea Moss were doing at the State Farm Arena that night.